Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to AI for Good, all year, always online. I'm Charlotte Kahn presenting AI for Good Perspectives. AI for Good is a year-round digital platform where AI innovators and problem owners learn, build, and connect to identify practical AI solutions to advance the UN SDGs. AI for Good Perspectives offer expert insights, global visions, and shared solutions from the AI for Good community. And today we focus on a project by ITU to engage university students in machine learning and 5G work. So to find out more, we first join Blessed Guda, who is based in Nigeria. Hello, Blessed. Uh, hello, Charlotte. Thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to be here. So, Blessed, your journey so far has been amazing. You are the best graduating student of the academic session 2019-2020 at the Department of Computer Engineering, at Federal University of Technology of MENA in Nigeria. You're also the winner of uh, ITU's focus group of autonomous uh, networks, Build the Sun 2021. And now you are awarded the fully funded MasterCard scholarship uh, to go to Carnegie Mellon University of Africa. So uh, tell us about uh, your background to start with and what makes you such a big success at the moment. All right, Th thank you so much for all the kind words. So, um, looking at my background a bit, um, I, when I was younger, my interest in computing sort of started when my dad bought us a desktop computer, with just an old computer with just 128 megabytes of RAM. And when he brought it home, I was so fascinated by the computer because even though we had a video player we had i had a video game and we had even a calculator at home i was so impressed by the computer because with that single computer i could play video games i could watch movies i could do what the calculator was doing and so it was so amazing to me that i kept asking myself what made this device to have several functionalities uh, so I kept on playing with it to, to get to know more about it. And every day as I got to know more about it, I discovered that it had so many more uh, capabilities. Uh, so I was so fascinated and my interest was really drawn to it. So by the time I finished secondary school, I was I, I already made up my mind that I was going to study computer engineering. So I moved into the Federal University of Technology, MENA, to pursue my undergraduate program in the field. Uh, by the time I finished my second year of study, YNS Research Group, headed by Professor James, uh, came recruiting students. And as I remember, um, one of the words he said to us, the students, was that he was looking to bridge the gap between the mathematics, the arithmetic we were doing in class with industry output. And immediately I heard that it resonated with me because that had been my goal to bridge the gap between what we were learning in class and the industry output. So we began working with him, preferring technological solutions to Nigerian problems. And then by when I moved to third year of study, he was impressed with the commitment we had showed. So he then introduced us to the ITU student initiatives, specifically the direct point of contact was through Dr. Vishnu, who remains an excellent mentor. Um, we began working on the focus group for machine learning for 5G, and then we moved on to the focus group on um, autonomous networks. So um, in, in summary, I would say um, we've been working, I've been working with the student um, initiatives of ITU for about three years now. Okay. And how did you first come in into contact with ITU student initiatives and what were you tasked with to start with and what were your first impressions? Thank you. Yeah, I, I was so excited to join the ITU because I learned the ITU is a global body. And so when we joined, we had these weekly Zoom meetings where we were mentored by Dr. Vishnu. And I think where we started from was we started on working on 5G and uh, that was very interesting to me because at, at that time in the country we only had 4g and now we were already been introduced to 5g so it was so interesting to me then um we began to look at use cases in emerging markets like nigeria we began working on the first project on 
an AI based classroom assistant to facilitate learning in um, African classrooms. And then we, uh, I was so lucky that that project, I was able to translate it to my final year project. So you see, it wasn't just uh, beneficial to me as per gaining knowledge, but it also helped me in my schooling um, efforts. Then as, as a consequence of the AI-based classroom, we developed an African English speech recognition system, a prototype, because of the challenge we saw with the common uh, available speech recognition engines, we weren't performing so well on um, African due to our accent, so we collected some data and developed a prototype. And then also um, during the COVID-19 pandemic, we also developed a contact tracing, a pandemic tracing application to help government efforts in curbing the spread of the uh, virus. And then finally, we also did some projects on um, autonomous networks. So um, the project was so interesting to me because there were things we could relate with. And overall, I would say, not the smoothest of rides at the beginning, but as I remain um, consistent with the meetings, it was so, so interesting that I, I couldn't just leave again. Thank you very much, Blessed. Um, really, you are looking at very practical and, and very positive applications of, of AI, so that's very inspiring indeed. Um, next, I'd like to join Vishnu Ram, who is Vice Chair for ITU's Focus Group on Autonomous Networks. Uh, Vishnu, you have been guiding students for ITU uh, on those initiatives. What's the key outline uh, of the ITU student initiative? What can you tell us about the program? Thank you, Sharad. That's a great question. Nice to be here. Uh, you know, we in ITU, we have this uh, cool, innovative stuff, the standards and the pre-standards and the very cool stuff which is happening here. But at the same time, we would like to get uh, people across the world to be involved in this cool and innovative stuff. So when we had this open forum of a focus group, which is quite open, we would uh, we wanted to catch this uh, so you know so to speak catch them young you know catch them young so we wanted to go out to these campuses and uh, get the students excited about the technology what we are working upon so we um, kicked off a pilot project uh, about uh, which is about involving students academia professors um, uh, around the world uh, to be involved in the, the work which we do. We had a small group of, we started off with a small group of 15 students, engineering students across uh, the world and uh, Nigeria was one of them. Um, we we uh, started off with the idea that we would give them something, but it ended up that we gained a lot in the process. We, they, 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 we had this fresh pair of eyes, uh, very good ideas coming from the campus, from the professors, as well as the students. Uh, one of the problems which we had was this awareness to create the more more awareness of the technology and that's one of the things which we achieved at the end as well to get the people excited aware of the technology that we are doing so using this initiative we have created this awareness created this pipeline of students to come and work with us that's what we have done uh, we have come a long way now the, the, between the initiatives that we have done but it's still uh, still uh, we have to attract more campuses more students more professors we, I would say we are reasonably successful, but uh, it's, there is a well-defined mechanism as well, but uh, we have to do more. Yeah. So what are the keys of your success? Good question. Yeah, so um, I would say that, um, first of all, first of all, what matters is the commitment, commitment from the students, from the, uh, from the uh, mentors that we have, from the group that we have, uh, to put in the energy and the time to, to see the work of the students, review the work of the students, uh, give them support and uh, give them access to documents and bring them up to speed. So that's, that's the first thing. And the second thing what we see is the alignment, the, 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 the local twist that we give to the subjects, as you heard Blessed talk about. We, we would like to get the subjects, the topics, the projects aligned with what we work upon, along with what the students work upon in the campus, as well as in the region, what's valid, 
what's relevant to the region. So that's something which we would like to stress that uh, if we are away from the campus, if we are away from the region, that's not going to work. Another thing is access. So when I say access, that means access to documents, access to experts, access to computer resources, sometimes networks, sometimes uh, even hardware, software, everything. Uh, plus, I would like to add uh, maybe regular follow-up. Uh, we, we had these weekly meetings. We have this regular follow-up. We never, never missed, the, except maybe for Christmas. Professor James knows about it. So we, we except for once or twice a year, we never miss our regular pull-ups. Uh, we had a very supportive ecosystem in the focus group. We, it's an open group and uh, we had a very supportive review system. That's another important aspect. And of course, overall secretary support, ITU is behind me. So they, I know that there is the power of behind me. It's not me alone. It's, it's, a, it's an organization behind me. So there is a secretary support. But, but there is one secret sauce which I'm missing. That is the professor. So we, we, have, we have, unless we have this secret sauce, uh, which is supporting us, we are not going to go anywhere with this. So that's, that's the most important aspect is the support from the professor. Thank you very much, Vishnu. That's the perfect introduction indeed for uh, Professor James Agajo, who's head of the Computer Engineering Department at the University of Mina in Nigeria. Um, Professor James, what are the benefits for academia of, of ITU initiatives for, for the students? Oh, thank you. I want to thank um, you for this opportunity. It's one wonderful privilege to be here with you. Um, the research group wireless, wireless um, embedded system technology research group was my brainchild in university and um, beyond the, it has gone beyond the research group with the emergence of um, the alliance with um, IT. And I can tell you for free that the research group has gone far up there beyond its contemporaries. Contemporaries in the sense that um, the benefits actually abound, abound because presently the students in their various engagements at that um, forum, focus group, have been able to meet with um, uh, industrial and academic experts and have been able to up their game academically. And I can as well tell you that uh, um, facing their contemporaries in their local environment, they are up there. Um, certainly, there is uh, a distinction to a great extent that um, their academic life has been impacted upon. So it's one very um, big benefit um, the research group has enjoyed. And myself as a mentor, I've tried as much as possible to see how much we can keep the students within one bound who has to be able to get to understand what we are in for. The initial challenges we have uh, was making the students understand what this is all about. But I can, I can tell you that they are reaping the benefit because uh, they are composure, academic standard, and some of these things they, they've taken time to learn during the workshop are not readily available in the conventional syllabus, because these are trending areas. So I think um, it's a big uh, opportunity for the student and they yeah, are moving within the university campus, our colleagues are pouring in as people are happy that yes, gradually our university's name has been put on the world map. It's there on the world map by virtue of um, IT. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. We're now gonna to talk to another student. Uh, Ms. Yemisi Akinsele, uh, since you have recently entered the, the program with ITU, so what are your expectations and hopes, especially after hearing all this? Thank you very much, Charlotte. Um, I'm very happy to be a part of an international body like ITU. Having worked with ITU now for several months and counting, I do hope to be trained as a resource person in this new generation of telecommunication and with the necessary experience gathered, in working with the experts. I hope to leverage on this wealth of experience to further create a substantial impact in the industry. 
thank you very much for your impressions. Um, I have a question now for Thomas Basicolo, the program officer and advisor of the ITU's focus group on autonomous networks. Thomas, what did ITU gain from this engagement with students? Uh, thank you so much uh, for the time and invitation for me to be here. Uh, with this uh, student collaboration activities, we planned to gain a lot. And in fact, we have gained a lot because uh, one of the ideas was to introduce students to ITU standards to make sure that we can, as already my colleague has pointed out, Vishnu, that we wanted to catch them young to make sure that we introduce uh, to students what ITU is, what they are working on. And with these uh, student activities, we have gained a lot because we have introduced several students and we have collaborations. So in general, uh, just to give you some highlights in, in terms of numbers, we had eight students contributions to one of the focus group uh, on machine learning. That was uh, around 2019-2020 timeframe. And also in from 2020, uh, 2021, we had the Buildathon activities uh, through the focus group on autonomous networks. We have several uh, contributions from students uh, to the Buildathon. And currently, of course, there is also a journal paper in the pipeline. These are solutions from the Buildathon activities. And most of the contributors were students. And we had also some workshops contributions in 2020 and 2021 by students who contributed to ITU work. So we have, uh, in fact, uh, gained a lot as ITU. Fantastic, it's good to, to hear it, absolutely. Now, uh, a last question for Blessed, really, to wrap up. Blessed, in a very few words, what has the ITU Student Initiative meant for you personally? Yeah, so uh, personally, the Student Initiative has really meant a lot to me. It has afforded me a chance to network with researchers from other parts of the world, other universities, other top organizations from other parts of the world. So I get to have a feel of what research is being done in other parts of the world, and I'm able to relate it with what we are doing here in Nigeria. And then also the student um, initiative has helped develop my presentation skills because with the uh, student initiatives, after you learn for a period of time, you are given opportunities to make student presentations, you are asked questions, so it helped me develop my presentation skills. And then also, it's uh, maybe a little one, We I have been able to win some prizes and some certificates, which have been able to, you know, kind of boost my uh, profile. So the, the benefits are really numerous. Very inspiring. Thank you so much. Thanks to all of you for your participation today. Much appreciated. All the best to you and to the future generation of students who will enter the program. That's it from us uh, for AI for Good Perspectives, all year, always online. Do stay tuned for more.